everyone, and welcome to episode 125 of Sleep and Relax ASMR. Uh, this is an episode I am so happy to do. Um, well, I mean, I'm happy to do every episode, of course, but today is a special episode because very, very soon, season 7 of Game of Thrones debuts, and we get to see what happens uh, next in this amazing series. Now, for some of you... Um, you may not know much about Game of Thrones or the lore or what's happening in the show, but not a problem. Just stick around. Either way, the show is really cool to learn about. Um, and even if you don't understand some of the names or topics I'm, I'm touching upon, it'll probably just bore you and you can fall asleep or take a nap, whatever it may be. So it's a win-win for everyone. Um, I imagine the vast majority of listeners are somewhat familiar with Game of Thrones, Um it's kind of funny because I, when the show first came out a long time ago, I mean, I guess it was about seven, eight years ago at this point, because I guess it's a season uh, every year. I really liked the show, but it was so many names and, and just, you know, I, I'm a little dense, so I was having a hard time grasping uh, the concept. <clears throat> And so I sort of told myself, uh, you know what, I'll just wait till I can sort of uh, watch it on demand or buy the seasons and I'll sort of binge watch it. And that's kind of exactly what happened over the last uh, few months. Um, I finally said, okay, there's enough content out there for me to actually um, invest the time and, and sort of if I don't get something, I can just rewatch it. And predictably, I loved it. And um, I finished season six actually last week. Um, so everything is still very fresh and I, I did that on purpose to time it with the debut of season seven so super super excited for this upcoming season so we'll start off with a quick recap of season six and uh geez a lot of crazy stuff happened in season six and then we'll analyze uh some of the key topics that i think will um that at least personally are, are of most interest to me and, and I'm, I'm most excited to sort of see how they develop in season seven. Let me pull up my season six graph here. Get that out of the way. Okay, so season six really touches on um, some major plot points that we expected. Uh, first and foremost, winter is no longer coming. Winter is here. Uh, we've seen the White Walkers a few times in season six, and we've seen that they are a formidable foe, and it's unlikely that humans can stand up and take them out just because they have the numbers. And not to mention the fact that uh, the White Walker grows every time they battle because all the fallen warriors from each tribe or group is killed. They, they just rise as White Walkers. So we, we really got a, a healthy dose of uh, finally, you know, I mean, I remember in season one hearing about Winter's Coming and the White Walkers and, and, you know, the first scene of the entire series, you get to see them, or see one, I suppose. Um, but finally in season six, it's, they're here, right? So we, we got to see sort of what, what's happening with them and you know, we can assess that season seven, they're going to play a major role. Uh, the second plot point season six really explored was this um, continuing struggle between the noble families of Westeros to gain ascension to the Iron Throne. Um, these families, of course, are the Starks, the Targaryens, the Tyrells, um, and I guess the Lannisters as well, even though Tommen is a Lannister and not a Baratheon because, you know, Cersei and Jaime, that's their son and not... Robert Baratheon's child, but that's just a question of semantics. Um, towards the end of season six, we see the Starks, um, John and, and Sansa, of course. I mean, John is, you know, st you know, he still considers Snow. He's not considered an actual Stark, but anyway, let me move on. We see the Starks defeat the Boltons uh, in the Battle of the Bastards. And we see John and Sansa finally go home and claim Winterfell for themselves again. And boy, did that feel good to finally see them there and in the comfort of their home, which is, again, in season one, that's all we see is the Starks and Winterfell, and then they make their way to King's Landing and all hell breaks loose. 
Um, of course, we have Tyrion Lannister, the disgraced member of his family, uh, who murdered uh, his father Tywin and is accused of murdering uh, King Joffrey, or his nephew Joffrey. He finds himself in Marine, where he meets uh, Daenerys Targaryen. Uh, they strike a very, uh, very interesting political relationship. And Tyrion eventually becomes the Hand of the Queen, as is an official member of uh, Daenerys's uh, council uh, in her quest to ruling the Seven Kingdoms. Um, back in King's Landing, everything is just going crazy. This is all still season six. Um, the War of the Five Kings is basically over. Um, well, we assume that after the War of the Five Kings, we, we assume that peace and stability would kind of reign in the Seven Kingdoms. I guess not the viewer expected it, of course, but the characters in the show that, that itself uh, definitely expected uh, some sort of stability, but it's been the exact opposite. Um, Cersei plotted an attempt to have the Tyrells uh, both Loras and, and Queen Marjorie imprisoned, and it was a power move that just totally backfired, um, because ultimately Cersei found herself accused of crimes and would have to do the Walk of Atonement and stand trial for her crimes. Of course, if you didn't watch season, the end of Season 6, uh, or if you did watch the end of Season 6, you'll know that rather than standing in her trial, Cersei gathers a bunch of wildfire burns the Great Sept, and she kills her rivals, members of nobility, uh, the Sparrows, and um, and the High Sparrow as well. And, uh, you know, she does this to eliminate her enemies, eliminate the Tyrells, and, and, and to not have to stand trial, and to basically mark her stamp as, um, you know, this badass character that just will not face consequences for anything she does, because she is... She's a badass. Um, but the plan backfires because Tommen almost immediately upon seeing this chaos jumps out of a window and commits suicide. All three of her children are dead now. Um, and then, of course, the final scene of season six was Cersei being crowned queen. Right? She is, she is now the queen of the Iron Throne. Queen of Westeros, Seven Kingdoms. So, it's not. Uh, that's just kind of like barely scratching the surface of what happened in season six because um, we also had really immensely interesting scenes where we follow Arya in her journey as well as Bran's journey to becoming the Three Eyed Raven. Um, season six again, just totally, totally nuts from from start to finish. I really enjoyed season six. But with all that being said, um, there are, of course, some immensely interesting topics um, and storylines that I'm looking forward to exploring in Season 7. So I want to share some of those with you, and hopefully um, there are things that you're also curious to learn more about as Season 7 develops. Um, the first series point is um, one that I think a lot of people are going to be interested in exploring, which is... We have just learned towards the end of season six <clears throat> that Jon Snow is is no bastard. Um, um, he isn't the son of Ned Stark. He is a son of uh, Ilyana Stark, which is Ned's sister, and Rhaegar Targaryen. Um, that actually makes him the nephew of Daenerys Targaryen. So one more time, Jon Snow, he's not the son of uh, Ned Stark and some lowborn commoner. He is... Um, I suppose he is uh, a bastard still in the sense that he's sort of this illegitimate son, but he is the son of a Stark. <clears throat> Excuse me. Need to get water. The son of um, a Stark and a Targaryen. Um, but the reason why Ned has to, um, the reason why Ned agrees to treat to to call him his bastard son is. To protect his sister, who uh, at that time I believe was married to uh, Robert Baratheon, and Rhaegar Targaryen was uh, married to Elia Martell, so they were both in uh, relationships uh, or married with uh, other members of powerful families. So 
it's inconceivable that she would have uh, the child of um, Rhaegar. So, of course, this this changes the whole dynamic, right? Because rather than John being the half brother of Rob and Sansa and Rickon, he's their cousin, because he is part Stark, but he's not the son of Ned. He's not even a Stark. He's he's really a Targaryen. He is John Targaryen. Um, this is really really interesting because it makes you wonder a couple things. Number one, the Starks are wardens of the North. They control Winterfell and their prominent family, and John is being accepted as uh, the sort of quote unquote King of the North, right? Despite being a bastard, despite being a Snow. They assume, however, that his father is Ned, Ned Stark, and so that's the reason why they acknowledge him as sort of having a claim to that role. And you know, he's a he's a, a leader of men, and you know, he's battle tested, you know, among other reasons. But I'm wondering what happens if they find out he's not a Stark, but that rather he's a Targaryen. Right? It doesn't mean he's a lowborn, obviously, but the Targaryens—they're just not the Nor- wardens of the North, right? It's always been the Starks. So does that mean Sansa uh, may eventually become the Warden? Or Wardeness? I'm not sure that's a word. Of the North. Um, will Bran eventually assume that role of ruler of Winterfell if and when he makes his way back? What happens to Jon's relationship with Bran and Sansa? Um, which I'm sure they'll touch on on Season 7 because it's been really heartwarming to see Sansa grow up and mature and finally have a break, right? Because she's basically been suffering since the beginning of the show after the murder of her father, or the execution of her father. Then she was being held in King's Landing with Joffrey, who's just nuts, and then being given to Ramsay, who, I mean, if if you've seen the show, you know that Ramsay makes Joffrey look like a, a sane person. He makes him look like a, like a harmless child. Um, so... She's been sort of going through all this um, difficulty over presumably the last few years, and then and after going through this turmoil and the struggles, we finally see her reunite with John, who she hasn't seen presumably in, in in several years, and they're able to defeat the Boltons in the north and reclaim their home, and it's lovely to see them as as brother and sister conquer the challenge and. And sort of become the co-rulers of Winterfell, which is sort of what what it's not stated, but there seems to be some sort of you know they sit together and and you know it looks like they're viewed as sort of this this brother sister combo that uh, control Winterfell for the moment. Um, but if John isn't a Stark, does that change Sansa's opinions on John as Warden of the North? Right. Will he retain that that position? You know, will will he be sort of viewed as the the Lord of Winterfell? And um, will his true lineage be divulged and explored in the show? And and how will that change the shifting landscape of uh, the Seven Kingdoms? My prediction is that Jon's lineage is discovered. And he eventually meets Daenerys, who is his aunt. And they will form an allegiance that unites the North with Daenerys' army and the dragons and the Greyjoys, who currently have an alliance with Daenerys where they provide her ships needed to sail to King's Landing. And my prediction here is that Jon, who is Jon Targaryen, um, will be one of the riders of Daenerys' dragons. So Jon will ride a dragon take over King's Landing alongside his Aunt Daenerys and alongside the Greyjoys. And um, furthermore, I think it's a necessary alliance that needs to take place in order to fight off the White Walkers which are coming. And unless they have multiple, if not all the strongest houses in King's Landing come together, that will, in my opinion, mean the end of human civilization in the Seven Kingdoms. Uh, in the entire Game of Thrones universe, if you will. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know how bold of a prediction that is, that John will eventually become a rider of the dragons, or of one of the dragons. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I read some about, um, you know, fan predictions and all that, but 
That's my prediction. His lineage comes out, and he eventually becomes a writer. Whether we see that season seven, uh, maybe it's next season. I think eventually we'll see it. But uh, already, let's let's talk about dragons. I'm very curious to know just how big these dragons have gotten. Uh, I think in some of the trailers for the new season, we see Drogon, which is the largest of the dragons. He looks even bigger than one can imagine. And it's going to be so fun to see how much bigger the other two dragons have gotten. Um, dragons, of course, continue growing, and they're only limited by the space they have available to roam. So now that the other two dragons are free and have um, open space, I wonder if they will grow to a similar size as, as Drogon was at the end of Season 6. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see who the other riders of the dragons are. Right, because we know Daenerys is one. Um, who are the other two? You know, as I mentioned uh, just a minute before, um, I think John is almost certainly a writer. Um, but I think a bold prediction is the other writer for one of the dragons will be Tyrion Lannister, and not again. Not sure how. Um, controversial or how um, I don't know if that's something that is, has been really thrown around there but that's my prediction is that Tyrion Lannister will also be, eventually make his way to being one of the riders of the dragon, dragons Tyrion of course is a very beloved character in the show but um, to the characters in this world alongside him he's sort of an oddball and an outcast he's constantly treated as lesser than because of his physical stature and because he's a drunk um but one thing is for sure, Tyrion is savvy, and he's a much better ruler and leader than others give him credit for. And we've seen at the Battle of Blackwater that he can lead men, and we've seen him use his eloquent speech to, to evade trouble. And I think that same ability will allow him to coax Daenerys and convince her that he should be trusted to be a rider of a dragon, and he'll, he'll coax the dragon into believing that he is the only suitable rider for him or her. I'm not sure about the gender, um, the genders of the dragons, I should say. So there you have it. Jon Snow is a rider of the dragon, um, and the other will be Tyrion Lannister. That is my prediction, and I'm pumped to figure out if I'm right or if I am totally wrong with this. So another major uh, theme, or what I think will be a, a major topic of Season 7, um, well, listen, it's one that I'm really interested in because I think this character is one of the most um, interesting characters in the entire show, and his sheer cunning and, and, and sneakiness is uh, unrivaled in the entire series. And that is what role will Littlefinger have in this upcoming season, right? Lord Peter Baelish, just the sneakiest, in a kingdom full of sneaky characters that will do anything in their ability to get ahead, Littlefinger is the sneakiest of them all. And he's just been slighted by Sansa, and it's clear he loves Sansa, or at least we think he does. Uh, he certainly loved Catelyn Stark, her mother. <clears throat> And he loves the idea of being with her in order to assume greater power. Um, one of the last seasons in season six is uh, we see the families in the north proclaim John to be uh, king of the north and they accept him, or at least, you know, lord of Winterfell. And we see Sansa kind of look over at Littlefinger and he's just kind of sulking in a corner. Um, Littlefinger, he's he's incredibly savvy, he's incredibly charismatic, but again, he's the sneakiest guy in the entire series. Uh, one episode, we'll see him do something that we assume is out of the good of his heart because uh, he loves Sansa or because he's he's uh, frustrated with how uh, dirty the politics have become. Um, but then immediately he'll he'll do something else to sort of um, you know he'll, he'll conspire to undo whatever he just did. You know, he's one moment. Listen, one moment. Uh, Littlefinger is plotting the murder of King Joffrey and plotting to have Santa escape. 
and the next moment he is back in King's Landing, letting Cersei know that he has Sansa Stark. So it's it's just it's one step forward, two steps back. The viewer can only can only sort of um, you know, and it's it's maybe it's not one step forward, two steps back. Maybe it's just we don't know what Littlefinger actually stands for. We don't understand what he really, you know, like what his end game, I think is clear. Um, his end game is, um, he wants to acquire more, right? He comes from, he doesn't come from a noble family. Um, he doesn't come from wealth. Um, he's just kind of an average average guy that that was able to uh through his um his um business savvy his charm his speech uh acquired more and more and more power so his end game is definitely acquire more power but the viewer just doesn't know what steps he'll take to acquire that power and who he has to sort of sacrifice in his way to getting there it seemed to me like he figured that Sansa was someone that he could uh, trust and eventually have, um, maybe eventually marry her. I'm, I'm assuming is sort of part of his, uh, was, was part of his idea as well. But now that Sansa seems to be, um, smart enough to not necessarily trust Littlefinger on face value, I wonder if now he shifts his focus to trying to acquire power by some other means and I'm just totally fascinated with this 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 storyline because somehow Littlefinger manages to do he, he somehow he somehow manages to get things done that other characters can't you know he can he can trust a family he can have a family he can uh, Littlefinger is so incredible as a character he's able to kill the queen of the veil vale, uh sansa's uh aunt in front of her somehow befriend uh the queen of the veil's vale son who now treat who now calls little finger uncle baelish uncle peter he calls him and so now lord baelish all of a little finger all of a sudden has um he has clout in, in a region that presumably had no no sort of um, influence on earlier, and now he sort of has the ear of the King of the Vale, or the Lord of the Vale, uh, sort of, you know, like that's all of a sudden he becomes a trusted advisor. No other character in the series can do that, with the exception of maybe Tyrion Lannister, but Tyrion Lannister is, um, for as charismatic and cunning as he is, I don't. he's not as cutthroat as Littlefinger. So what will Littlefinger do to climb the ladder in this game um it might not be the most interesting topic for others but for me it's actually something that i can't wait to see what he does because i like little finger a lot despite him being this he's such a weasel but he i guess the thing with little finger is so far we haven't seen him do something that ends in the demise the direct demise of one of the characters that we love. I suppose you could say that with Ned Stark, he, he had some, some major influence on, but that was all the way in season one. I, I mean, he did have a lot to do with that, of course. I mean, I guess you could sort of point at him and say it, it is largely his fault, but um, we haven't seen him um, directly involved in the death of Sansa or John or, you know, Bran or Tyrion, obviously. Um, so maybe that's why it feels like he has almost no no real teeth. He's he's like a dog that barks but doesn't really bite. My prediction for season seven is that my beloved Peter Baelish, Lord Peter Baelish, Littlefinger, is going to do something that the viewer hates him for. And whether it's the death of a character or imprisoning someone or killing a dragon, I don't know. Uh, this is just pure speculation by my part. I think he's going to do something that the viewer absolutely loathes him for, and I think he's going to become a major antagonist in Season 7. 
because he doesn't feel like he has the ear of Sansa anymore. He doesn't feel like he has a real chance of marrying her and, and acquiring any sort of influence in the North. I think he's going to do something that gets us to hate him. That's my prediction with him. And I can't wait to see how that unfolds. Let me see what else I have here. White Walkers. Okay. Last but not least, the White Walkers. What is their trajectory? Will they make their way into King's Landing next season? Um, the Seven Kingdoms continues to be in shambles, and the dynamic between uh, who is in charge, alliances amongst families, it's this forever changing board, right? But one thing is certain that is winter is, is upon us. You know, the, the phrase is winter is coming. No, winter is not coming. Winter is here. And we know the White Walkers are the biggest threat the Seven Kingdoms have ever seen, right? Pretty much up until now, we've seen families uh, fight each other for um, in this game, right? They've, they've fought each other for ascension to the Iron Throne or to gain political um, influence or geographical influence, whatever it may be. But the White Walkers make all that seem insignificant because they are a legitimate threat that can wipe them out. We know the White Walkers are a major plot point in the, the season because um, the the major, you know, the poster, one of the posters for season seven features the White King's face on it. So it's no longer just about Sensei to the Throne. It's a matter of survival now. And so I'm, I'm curious to see just how big a role the White Walkers play. And I'm, I'm sure they will. And I'm wondering if the uh, major families in the series will come together and figure out how to deal with this threat probably won't get handled in season seven but that'll be interesting to uh to figure out i mean i could ramble about this forever but i'm really excited to see what unfolds in season seven those are what i just touched on um you know the plot points again were uh john's lineage being discovered what's going to happen there if it's discovered um what happens to the dragons who's writing them how big have they gotten what kind of role will they play uh, Littlefinger's role in season seven and the White Walkers. Those are just some of the major topics or plot points or storylines that I'm interested in seeing unfold in season seven. Um, but that's really it. I just, I can't wait to watch it now in a, a couple of days, but what do you guys think will happen in season seven? Uh, did I omit any major topics that you think will be central to the development of the series? Um, Am I full of crap and I don't know anything about Game of Thrones? You can let me know as well. I'd prefer if you weren't that mean about it, but... And so far, I don't think I've had any um, mean comments. Uh, I've again, you know, I get criticized, and that's that's cool. You know, that helps me make the show better, but... Let me know what you guys think about this upcoming Season 7. Let me know if you want me to do more Game of Thrones-related episodes. You can send suggestions to hello at sleepandrelaxasmr.com. Um, and you can just send general questions and, and suggestions in there. So that's all for this episode. Thanks as always for listening and take care.